What's good, YouTube, man? It's David with the Fan TV, man. Back at you. Another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button, all right? Uh, also, comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. Look. All right. So, the Ravens versus Lamar Jackson, right? Contract situation, contract saga, however you want to describe it. It's in full-blown uh, off-season mode, news reports coming from every single direction, no matter how, where you look, all right? The very simple truth is nobody knows the whole truth. Nobody knows really what's going on, all right? Um, just in the last week, I've heard so many different reports. I've heard Jeff Rebeck say that when replying to somebody on Twitter that the Ravens have made an offer to Lamar Jackson, making him the second or third highest paid player in the NFL. All right, I've heard that Lamar Jackson was a fully guaranteed deal. Uh, from Jamison Hensley and I think Jeremy Fowler on the ESPN report that all the counter offers that Mark Jackson has sent back to the Ravens have been fully guaranteed. All right. Then Stephen A. Smith goes on TV yesterday and says that somebody from Lamar Jackson's campus reached out to him that he's never asked for a fully guaranteed deal. Okay. Then we get the uh, Stephen A. Smith says that, uh, the Ravens office stopped at 133. But when Lamar Jackson was asked during the season how much you know guarantee was on the table, uh, I think Diana Rossini asked him, he said it was between 160 and 180. So that doesn't match up. So then also, um, if you follow Rita, you know, NFL chick on Twitter, she has the Win and Drop podcast, great podcast for Ravens fans, things like that, okay? She has said before previously that the Ravens are 15 to $20 million apart on guarantee with Lamar Jackson, okay? Not the $100 million. So 15 to 20 is still a significant gap, but it's not what's been reported. So, I say all that to say this. Nobody truly knows what's going on. All right. Um, I didn't do the video yesterday because I really kind of wanted just to get my thoughts about it and really how I wanted to, to, to say this. All right. The media has to do a job. They have to get the clickbait. They have to get the things out there to let you know what's going on. Right. Or so it seems. Right. All right. Not to say Lamar Jackson hasn't leaked stuff. Not saying the Ravens have leaked stuff. Because obviously this is a negotiation. Things come out. It does. But generally, Ravens have been pretty private. Lamar Jackson has no agent, so who are they getting the information from? All right. When this happens, they're trying to make you pick a side. All right. One side is the Ravens are cheap. The Ravens don't know what they're doing. The Ravens are going to lose a superstar quarterback, uh, all because they don't want to pay. All right. The other side is Lamar Jackson is greedy. He doesn't have an agent. The NFLPA is evil. Um, they don't care about the players. They don't care about the fans. They just care about beating the owners. They're trying to make you choose a side, right? And honestly, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle of that, all right? Steve Bashali doesn't want to be the second owner to offer a fully guaranteed contract. He doesn't want to probably cement it in stone, right? Okay, cool. Now, the other side is Lamar Jackson may have never offered, asked for a fully guaranteed contract because he's never said that. That report came from reporters guessing that, hey, the holdup must be the fact that Deshaun Watson got a fully guaranteed deal, so Lamar Jackson want, must want that deal. When in truth... Lamar Jackson probably just wants more guaranteed money than what Deshaun Watson got. Deshaun got, what, 230 fully guaranteed? Lamar Jackson may just want 235 guaranteed on a $315 million contract. That may be the case, but once again, I'm speculating because nobody truly knows. All right? It's business. It gets messy. Especially when you have a quarterback contract, especially when you have two sides that seem to be at odds about something. What that something is, we don't know. We don't know. Simply put, I'm not going to tell you that there are no villains in here. Uh, I'm not going to say that's the villains in the situation because, I, to me, there are none. Each side is trying to do what they think is best. That's my opinion on it. Now, while I feel sorry for Steve Bashadi and say that, um, well, you know, it's a lot of money to put aside for one player. No, I'm not going to do that. I've seen things like people saying that, well, you know, when you, when you sign these guaranteed deals, you got to put the fully guaranteed amount into escrow, which most fans probably do know about now, right? So, so say if Lamar Jackson got 235, 250 guaranteed, see Rashadi or the Ravens account, whatever, how you want to say it, we have to put that money into escrow. Well, yay, he's a billionaire. Move some money around. Make things happen. I'm not going to feel sorry for you on that front. I'm just not. Um, at the same time, he's a part of the owner's club. They don't... He was part of the owner's club also... Last offseason, he was vi he was adamantly against what the Browns did in offering the Sean Watson that fully guaranteed contract. So none of this is surprising. I am on the the side that I'm on is seeing players get paid. Right? They're the ones that play the game. 
They're the ones that take the risk. They're the ones that put their body out there on the field, right? We've seen what happened this, all, this, this season. DeMar Hamlin, a player, goes out there. Now, imagine he signs a big deal, right? It's not fully guaranteed. He goes out there, he can never play football again. And because he's decided to play, go on out that field, put the pads on, all the money that he could have made is lost. I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, you can say, well, you're going to sign these fully guaranteed deals, tie up the cap, this and that. Look, you're paying players for what they've done in the past and what you can think they can do in the future. The future is unknown. Okay? But Lamar Jackson has done enough to say, hey, look, man, this contract at the top of the market, this is what we can give you. All right? And maybe the Ravens have offered him a good deal. Maybe he doesn't think that deal is good enough. We don't know. But what I don't like is the fact that we got to have villains on each side. All right? Now, the Russell Street Report, right, Ra Ravens blog, okay, they put out an article saying the Ravens are being held hostage by Lamar Jackson. The Ravens are being held hostage by Lamar Jackson. That's dramatic. It's not that serious. It's a contract negotiation. Nothing here is going to affect your life in that kind of manner, all right? Then in the article, they go out there and they paint the uh, uh, I think he said D. Marie. I always call him the Morris, but I think it's D. Marie Smith, the NFLP, NFLPA head, as a villain because he wants the players to get their money that the owners offered to them at one point when they signed the contract, but then if something happens, they can take it away. So now they're saying that he's a villain because, you know, he hates the owners and he wants the players to get paid and all of this stuff, and now he's the bad guy. That's what the article was saying, right? Saying that if Lamar Jackson would just pay this 3% to the agent, he likely would have a contract right now because the agents want what's best for their client. What? Do y'all... <laughs> the history of agents is not always wanting what's best for the client. And that's always obviously There's good agents. There's good people in every profession. Of course. But we got to know that the agents want what's, what's the best for the agent. The more money they can get you, great. That's the high percentage they can get. Cool. Of course. But also, prominent agents, long-standing agents, are friends with the NFL owners. They represent multiple clients on the same team. They represent guys that the agent knows that, hey, yeah, I've known, let's say, Bashadi. I've known Bashadi for years. We'll get the deal done. Good guy. Right? These guys are not always going to be in the interest of the player. Could it be simpler? Could it be easier? Yeah, of course. Of course it could be easier. But the point is... We got to stop going off whatever the media says, good or bad. Whether the media says Lamar Jackson wants this, whether the media said the Ravens have offered that. The truth is we don't know. This is a unique situation, okay? I said previously, you got a team in the Ravens that don't leak much information. You got Lamar Jackson who has no agents represented by some advisors and obviously his mother's in there as well, okay? A lot of information hasn't been out there. It just hasn't been, Okay. We got to take a step back and realize that whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. This is going to be an uncomfortable offseason for Ravens fans, for the Ravens organization. And hell, maybe even Lamar Jackson himself. That's just what it is. You got a high-profile quarterback who has played out the entirety of his rookie deal. We're kind of in unprecedented territory here. You know when you see a guy who's won an MVP within his rookie deal play out his entire contract. It just doesn't happen that way. So, of course, I'm not going to say that I'm blaming the media because they're doing their job. But at the end of the day, we don't have to listen and die on to every single report that's out there. We just don't have to do that. All right. Um, would I like to see the Ravens pay Lamar Jackson? Of course. Of course. I'm a Ravens fan. He's the most exciting quarterback. He's the most exciting offensive player this franchise has ever had. Right. And not just exciting. An actual real good player. A great player. So, of course, I want to see him get paid. Of course, I want to see him get that money that he, in my opinion, that he deserves. At the same time, we don't know what the hell is happening. All right. Next week at the Combine, uh, Bashadi, no, not Bashadi, sorry, the Costa, Harbaugh, they'll probably be there. They're going to answer questions. Will they tell the truth? I don't know. Maybe not. But the point being is this. The Ravens versus Lamar Jackson, nobody truly knows what's going on. You don't have to be so high on one side, so low on the other side. The Ravens. Could they do better in offers? Maybe. I don't know. Is Lamar Jackson being greedy if he wants more guaranteed money than Deshaun Watson? No, he's not being greedy. He wants market value for a guy that he is better than. Simple as that. Then I see things like Kyler Murray got uh, $189 million, you know, guaranteed all, all together, right? 
If that's the case, the floor for Lamar Jackson's guarantees has to start at $200 million. So now, if the Ravens are all are $15, $20 million apart from there, that makes sense, right? So, listen, the point being is this. Next week, maybe even today, there will probably be another Lamar Jackson story. You can keep scrolling. You don't have to read it. Until, it, until you see the headlines that say Lamar Jackson is traded, Lamar Jackson is extended, Lamar Jackson is signed, Everything else is speculation. Everything else is guesses. And you don't have to hang on to every word about it. I'm going to keep preaching that message. I don't care how many videos I got to do. I, I really don't. Because um, I said this before. Get off of the Lamar Jackson media carousel. They're going to take you for a ride. He's the most high-profile free agent uh, available candidate this offseason. Yes, even more high-profile than Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson is younger. He's 20, what, 25, 26 years old. He's not at the twilight in his career. He's entering his prime. This is a player that all the focus and the attention is going to be on. So with that being said, they're going to make stories about it. And me, I'm not going to pay attention to every story. I'll do a video here and there, but I'm not going to dedicate every video to every new claim, every new false rumor, every new report that when it gets put out, it gets shot down immediately. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. We don't know until something happens, okay? The franchise de uh, tag deadline is coming up, what, like in 10 days or something like that? We'll see then. They got Ravens out to March 7th to make a decision. Something will happen before the NFL draft because if Lamar Jackson is going to be traded, Ravens will want to use those picks in this upcoming draft. I hope it doesn't come to that. I pray it doesn't come to that. But until something happens, we truly don't know, man. That's what that's all I gotta say about it, man. So look, if you stay to this point in the video, I appreciate it. Uh, let the content in this channel go ahead, hit that subscribe button, man. Y'all have a beautiful and wonderful day. It's your boy Gabriel, just on the fan TV. I'm out.